Guys, what's up? How's it going? Thank you so much for tuning in. This video, I'll be reviewing the new Retro Freak. This is a new console that came out end of last year, 2015. And get this, guys. It will play 11 different consoles in one. So the Retron 5 could play a lot, right? And the Retron 5, a lot of people were impressed. And it's a cool, con cool console, uh, kind of controversial in some parts as far as what it can do. But this thing can actually play more consoles than the Retron 5. So what can the consoles, what can this play? It can play NES, Famicom, Super Nintendo, Super Famicom, Genesis, Mega Drive. You can play uh, Game Boy, Game Boy Color, Game Boy Advance, also TurboGrafx-16, uh, PC Engine, and Super Graphics games. So it's a long list of consoles, uh, and it's all built in here. So this thing retails for, I've seen anywhere between 200 to 225 US dollars uh, for the console itself. Uh, it comes with the console. I'm gonna unbox this, I'll show you what it comes with, but it comes with the console, the controller, obviously all the hookups. There's no packing game with this or anything like that. Uh, but the cool thing is they're gonna make attachments for it as well. So you can actually play with the, a, a future attachment, so you can play um, Sega Master System games, SG-1000 games, which is a, by Sega, it came out before the Sega Master System, as well as Sega My Card games, which is uh, a card reader for the uh, SG-1000 uh, line of consoles. So that's pretty cool. So that's going to add it to, I think, a total of like 14 or 15 different consoles, which is <laughs> really impressive. Still no N64, unfortunately, but although I heard that the patent for the N64 ended last year, so I think we're going to start seeing some N64 clones. Fingers crossed, that would be freaking amazing. But let's do an unboxing, show you what's included, and go from there. Okay, guys, so here is the Retro Freak uh, unboxing. Uh, now, the version I'm about to show you is actually an Amazon exclusive version. So it, the normal console is just white. This version actually is maroon and white, done in the, kind of the same colors as the original Nintendo Famicom. It does come with an adapter here for different controllers that you can plug in the original controllers with, which is awesome. Um, this is all in Japanese, so I'm not going to translate this for you because I don't know how. Uh, but on the back, it shows you, you know, the hookups, so the different cartridge slots. It shows you, um, you know, the controllers and all that good stuff too, okay? So let's do an unboxing and show you what's exactly inside this bad boy. Okay, so we're gonna open this thing up. Um, also, one thing I do wanna mention before I forget is when I mentioned the or previous attachment that plays all the Sega additional games, it does also play uh, the Game Gear as well, which is super sweet. So we'll play Game Gear games, which about time the Game Gear gets love, okay? Here's some uh, instructions, all in, in Japanese. Um, let's see what else it comes with. We have, here is a controller. It's almost about the same size as a Super uh, Nintendo controller. You have the start, you have your select option, and your home button. This is an android base console, so uh, it does basically dump the ROM, uh, just like the Retro 5 does, which there are pros and cons, of course. People have mixed feelings about that, but it does something really cool. Uh, it will actually, when you dump the ROM, if you have a micro SD card, you actually can save the ROM onto uh, the card. So you can basically borrow games from friends. You can just basically uh, dump the ROM and play. You don't need the cartridge to play the game after that, which is pretty sweet. I think it's kind of a neat thing. Uh, B-A-Y-X, your shoulder buttons. Uh, shoulder button, let me take off the plastic here real quick. Overall, it does, the buttons are fairly responsive as far as, you know, they have a nice give to them. Um, shoulder buttons, or uh, bumper buttons are a little less desirable, to be honest with you. They're, they're a little shorter than I would like, but fits the hands comfortably enough, I suppose. Again, like I mentioned before, US, uh, it's USB. It does, I was staying corrected, it does come with two controllers, so... I read somewhere that the original package only came with one controller. Uh, maybe because this is Amazon exclusive, maybe I get two controllers with it. Extra bonus, I was not expecting that. Um, here is your HDMI, which is cool. This will upscale the games to uh, uh, 720p, uh, which is awesome. Here is, um, I don't know, some type of connector, maybe for the additional uh, you know, controller adapter. This thing is packed really nice, and it does have some good weight to it, which is always a good sign. Usually the, the lighter consoles are, are not as good quality. thing does look kind of sexy, I'll be honest with you. Uh, you have three USB 
uh, slots here. This is where game slots here. This is where the TurboGrafx-16 PC Engine would go. I'm assuming this is where the Game Boy, Game Boy Color, and Game Boy Advance games would go. Uh, and these are different slots. On the back, this is your micro SD card, the power and HDMI. And this is your power button, way back here, very tiny power button. All right, that's interesting. Okay. The one thing I do want to test is how well, a lot of people complain about the grip of the games. You know, how well does this console grip game? So a lot of times, you know, the Retro 5, one knock on it was the game's grip too much. So I'm going to just try a Famicom game. Definitely recommend this game, by the way, Star Wars. This is different than the North American release of Star Wars. Great game, much better, my personal opinion. So fits in pretty nicely. There is some resistance, but definitely nothing too terrible. You know, uh, let's see if we can do it without. Yeah, it's not bad. Definitely not as bad as the Retron 5. Uh, let's try a NES game, for example. So this is, this is kind of weird, guys. I'm trying to figure out, you know, I've read that this thing plays NES games. It's been advertised. Yes, it plays NES games. Doesn't fit in this slot. Doesn't fit in this slot, nor this slot. Obviously, it doesn't fit up front. So it appears that this thing, out of the box anyway, does not support NES games. You need a separate adapter to play it. So I'm sure it reads it, you just need the adapter. So yeah, it's kind of disappointing, definitely a knock on the console. So out of the box does not play NES games. That is a true shame, but oh well. Um, here, let's try Justice Game, see how well it grips. Maximum Carnage, definitely a great game. So snaps in, and it does grip a little bit. Guys, real quick before I move on <laughs> to the, I did want to show you, I almost forgot guys, this is one thing I did want to show you. This is an adapter for the controller. So um, you have various different adapters for, you do have a TurboGrafx-16 uh, adapter as well, which is neat. Uh, and Super Nintendo, um, let's see, that looks like it's NES, uh, Genesis. And this one looks like it's, um, I don't know, some kind of adapter. I'm not sure if you guys know what that is, let me know. Anyway, now we're going to watch uh, some, the interface and some gameplay. <laughs> All right. Okay, so when you first turn on the system, this is you have your language selection. You have either uh, Japanese, English, or, or Chinese. I'll stick with English since you definitely don't want to hear my, my Chinese or Japanese. So we'll stick with English for the review. And it also gives you like a license agreement, which I'm sure 99.9 .9 of us will uh, accept anyway and not really pay attention to. And then it gives, you have to modify your screen size uh, to fit your TV. So make sure all the, the border touches the, the screen. And then it gives you, uh, you know, game mode setting warning. You just close that. And finally, it will give you like a, a little update, which at first I'm like, oh no, this is what I, just what I wanted is another update. But there's no, it's not connected with the internet, so it must be already built into the hard drive already, or the memory. Um, and how this works, very similar to the Retron 5, you plug in your current, your, your game, it's gonna dump the ROM. Uh, I don't have a micro SD card currently in the system, but uh, there are cheats available if you did. Uh, you can do game settings if there's a game in there. Controller, you can uh, map your controller. And there's AV settings, which you can uh, change your filters. Quick load time. And the first game I'm going to show you is The Lost Vikings for the Super Nintendo. This is actually published by Interplay, which is now known today as Blizzard, actually. So this is one of their very earlier games. This is considered a puzzle platforming game. There are two games released. There's a sequel for this as well called The Lost Vikings 2. Uh, and this is a really fun game. It's a... Um, very, very interesting. You control four players at one time. They each have different weapons and abilities. And that's kind of where you get the whole uh, puzzle uh, element of it. So this is where the game looks like uh, without any filters. Uh, if you just plug the game in, it's got very bright. Now the capture device there glitched a little bit at the end. That's a capture device. Don't mind that. Uh, and uh, this is the first character you control. You can push the left L and R shoulder buttons to switch between characters and they can unlock different things. So. Definitely a game to check out if you have a Super Nintendo. This is definitely a unique game. Here, you push the menu button, you can change your filter. This is a two, two times Sal. I think that's how it's pronounced anyway. Close it, you can kind of see how it just sharpens, gets rid of, rid of uh, some of the pixels anyway. And just looks a little sharper. This game is a challenging game. So if you like challenging games, this is definitely uh, one for you to check out. But I do like the, the animation. It kind of reminds me of the Hanna-Barbera style. Uh, cartoons for sure really really enjoy it kind of reminds me of a classic cartoon from the from the 90s that you would see or the 80s per by chance all right i'm going to go to another option here we'll do another filter this is super see what that looks like 
Uh, again, it looks almost too washed out. I think the Super almost causes it to, to be too washed out, especially when you're playing the NES. I'll show you an example of that later. Super Eagle. Again, slightly different. Scale two times. You can see the different ones. So these are all pretty much the same as a Retron 5. So if you play that, you're familiar with it. So I'll show you, I'll show you what uh, scan lines look like as well. Kind of made it look like it was playing on a classic television. I think that's a cool touch for sure. I feel like the old school. So to exit the game, you have to push X, which is an, kind of an interesting button you have to push because it's, uh, you know. Anyway, this is Zen Key. This is for the Super Famicom. And this is a kind of a really fun game uh, for the Super Famicom, but I just want to kind of show you an example of what, you know, that does play Super Famicom games, no problem. It's in the same slot as the, the Super Nintendo, of course, where that would go. Here's what the two time cell uh, looks like, or two XL. Just smooth, I think the game looks really cool, really sharp, uh, really crisp graphics, sound sounds great. Uh, definitely emulates the game, so to speak, pretty well. Go ahead and close. Go back to the main menu. Okay, I'm gonna pull that game out, and the next game will be. Let's show you the Famicom game. This you can see how quickly it loads again. This is Star Wars. This is a game I was talking about before. Much different than the, the NES port of the game by Namcot, which is basically Namco. And if you're a Star Wars fan, this is definitely a game uh, to check out. Uh, for the Famicom. Right now, let's, let's just put none, no filters on. You can see the big difference how, you know, the, I almost prefer uh, when you play like, any Astro Super Famicom games to have no filters, because when you add the filter, again, it just makes it look kind of washed out, in my personal opinion. This game definitely follows the story of Star Wars much more than the, the NES port. So you get a lightsaber, which is kind of interesting because Luke never started off with a lightsaber in the movie. I think those are supposed to be Jawas. I'm not sure what those are supposed to be. Here's a filter. See, it doesn't look terrible, but almost a little bit too bleached out, in my personal opinion. This is uh, Genesis. This is Maximum Carnage. Oh, I love this game. This came out for uh, the Super Nintendo as well, which is a great port, and I believe the cart was red, if I recall. Uh, this is by LGN, so it's actually a, one of the better games by LGN. I think most of the games that we think of LGN are not very good quality games. This is the exception to the rule. It's a great beat em up. You can play as Spider Man, Spider Man, or um, Venom in the game later on. And it's got a really cool like graphic style to it. I really enjoy it. I think it makes it look, uh, we'll say, comic book. The only downside about this game, I think the, the enemies are, are a little repetitive. They all kind of look the same, essentially. But this game does get very, very challenging later on. The enemies can get kind of cheap. I like later on when you can play as Venom. I think that's a really cool and uh, definitely a game to check out. Also another good game is Life, Life and Death of Superman. That's a good beat-em-up as well for the Super Nintendo. I think that might have come out for the Genesis as well. I'm not sure. But uh, here's a filter. Can I show you the different... And it looks so sharp when you have that filter on. I think it looks great. This, I think, definitely looks better with the filter on. Okay, this is Castle of Illusion. This is for, this is actually the Mega Drive port. And I'm going to show you how uh, the save uh, part works. So you basically just go to, to save. You can save any point. You select a, a slot that you want to. And then when you want, you can just reload it. So there is, you know, 3.1 gigs of memory in, in the space in the system so that's definitely what it's used for which i think is is a nice feature and definitely uh i guess uh, you can just reload there you go see so that it's definitely a positive over emulation opposed to playing on the original hardware you would not be able uh, to do this turn scan lines on you can see how the scan lines definitely make it look interesting as well 
Fun game, by the way. There's a remake that came out a couple years back. I got it on Steam. Uh, this is Bonk's Adventure for the, the original Game Boy. So, plays a little different than the TurboGrafx-16 port, which is my favorite port. And Bonk was kind of the, the mascot for TurboGrafx-16, I think, at least. Uh, he was, it's a fun. There were three games that came out for the TurboGrafx-16. Uh, Bonk's Adventure came out was ported to the NES, of course. That's a super rare game. The Game Boy port isn't as hard to find as the NES port. It's still a really fun game to check out, though. You use your head, and uh, it's an interesting platformer former for sure. Show you a filter. Again, it looks pretty smooth for the Game Boy, surprisingly, but it doesn't have any uh, Game Boy color or anything like that, or, or Super Game Boy thing where you can add some color to it. There's no option uh, for that. Go and take out the cartridge. We'll put another one in here. It's going to be a Game Boy Color game. This is the Simpsons Nightmare of the Living Treehouse for the Game Boy Color. I'm a big fan of the Simpsons. Uh, it's been around forever. It's hard to believe it's been around since the 80s. It's, uh, it's the longest going show ever. There's been a lot of Simpsons games that have been ported over. Uh, what is your favorite guy? What's your favorite Simpsons game? I, I'd probably have to say the Simpsons Arcade by Konami is probably one of my favorites. Um, definitely, but there's, there's been a handful of them, so I'm curious what your guys' favorite Simpsons game is. I didn't buy, I haven't, I don't own too many Game Boy Color games, to be honest with you. There's a lot of good games out there for Game Boy Color. I just never got into the system. I just always prefer the original old school Game Boy. And this is kind of a weird, definitely interesting game. All right, this is the Game Boy Advance. This is Street Fighter 2 Turbo, or Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo, or whatever. There's so many Street Fighter 2 games, it's crazy. But this is where the Game Boy Advance... I love me, the Game Boy Advance. I certainly do love the Game Boy Advance. And I love the adapter for the Game Boy, or the GameCube, rather. That's a, certainly a great adapter. But this is a, good, a decent port uh, of Street Fighter 2. I figure this is timely, since Street Fighter 5 recently came out as of doing... Uh, this video got different uh, backgrounds, different uh, stages that we're used to seeing. Um, here's a filter. Looks decent. Uh, Airzonk for the TurboGrafx-16. Uh, this is part of the the Bonk series, um, so, you know, but this is, uh, I believe, exclusive to the TurboGrafx-16 or, or PC Engine. It wasn't port to any other console. This is a shooter, kind of unique. Just, I love the Turbo FS16. Honestly, it's it's one of my favorite systems. Super underrated. I think there's a lot of great games for it. I love the Hue cards. I love everything about the Turbo Graphics 16. I love the fact that the system is like twice the size as the PC Engine, even though it doesn't necessarily need to be. They wanted to make twice the size as far as physically the, the size of it. It's so funny. Now I'm gonna add a filter here. You can see the difference, and this looks really sharp on the Turbo Graphics 16. Very, very impressive. Look how cool that looks. This game's aged very, very well over the years. Necromancer, which is like an RPG game for, this is for the PC engine. Uh, this is a glitch on um, my capture device, kind of glitched out. This wasn't the system itself, so I know at the bottom there it kind of looks glitchy. Uh, that is not necessarily the case, but this is all in Japanese, so even getting started on an RPG in Japanese is it's tough. So you can imagine um, playing this game Unless you understand Japanese, it's impossible to play. This game I'm going to show you is Naimakamura. I believe I'm pronouncing that right. Maybe not. But this is the Super Graphics system, which is the successor to the uh, PC Engine. Uh, and this is basically uh, Ghouls and Ghosts. Uh, and this is one of the best home ports you will find of Ghouls and Ghosts. And this is a must-own game for that system. This is such a fun game and just, you can see graphically, it's it's so sharp, uh, almost like Super Nintendo, but even a little bit better in my personal opinion. This is definitely the version to check out. The series itself, Ghosts and Goblins, Ghouls and Ghosts, super hard, super hard series, but uh, nonetheless, this is definitely the port tone. So in conclusion, what do I think about the Retro Freak? Well, let me start off with the pros that I feel are, are some positive things about the console. First off, the obvious, it can play a lot of consoles, 
a lot of variety. I love the fact that Turbo Graphics 16 PC Engine is included. That to me is one of the most underrated consoles out there and I love the fact that it's getting some love. So that is really cool. Uh, the fact that you can dump the ROMs onto an, a micro SD card and not having to worry about plugging in the cartridges uh, is convenient and I love that. I love that they added that. The fact that you can, you can um, scale the pictures, you can uh, add filters to the game. Uh, that's cool. You can certainly do it on the Retron 5 as well. That's, that's nothing really that new. You can save games at any point, just like the Retron 5. You can add cheats, uh, kind of like a game genie, so to speak. That is cool. So that is are some perks of the fact that this is basically an emulator machine. Let's call it what it is. Um, the fact that you can add add-ons, like you can play additional games that's going to, you know, you'll be able to play uh, additional Sega systems in this case. It'd be really cool to see a N64 adapter someday for it. Uh, I'd love to see Where's the Atari Lynx love? I love the Atari Lynx. Where's that? Where are the classic consoles like Atari 2600, ColecoVision, and Television? I'd love to see adapters for that eventually as well. So perhaps this gives them the ability to, to add those ad uh, add-ons uh, like they're doing currently. So that, that's definitely a positive. Um, as far as some of the, the down things, some of the cons about this console, not a huge fan of the controller. Um, you know, it is a, basically a super tender controller, which is fine, but you know, when you're playing um, you know, Genesis games can be a little bit awkward. However, you can still play and use uh, a, a normal Genesis or Mega Drive controller through the adapter, of course, which is a plus. Um, you know, the fact that out of the box it doesn't play NES games, even though it advertises that it does play NES games, is a big let to me. Uh, the fact that uh, this isn't the actual hardware, so to speak, that this does emulate can be kind of seen as a downfall for some people. Uh, some people like to see, play the pure console experience, and this is definitely not that, but I think the, the benefits of the emulator, the fact that it emula emulates are definitely uh, outweigh the, the negatives, and the fact that just the, the cost-wise, that you, um, it just looks sharper, and it's upscaled to uh, 720p, which is a big positive in my book. Uh, another additional uh, setbacks or cons are, now this might be kind of finicky, but this is the HDMI cable. It's like super short. It's like maybe three feet long, so not very short, uh, not very long at all, which means you're, you're kind of stuck at you know, this being very close to the TV. Not a huge issue, but they could have made this definitely longer. Um, and, you know, the power button is kind of awkward in the back spot here. Um, definitely better than the power button on the Retron 5. I, I hated the fact they had to hold down the Retron 5 power button for so long to put this thing up. That's not the case here. Um, but overall, the pros definitely outweigh the, the cons uh, when it comes to this console. So do I recommend the Retro Freak? Yes, I do. And for those who are curious, even though this is a Japanese console, this will work uh, if you live in North America or, or uh, in TSC uh, regions, North, you know, area. Uh, you just, the, the power outage is a little bit, the power difference is, is slightly different. The outlets are the same in Japan as they are in North America. So Canada, Mexico, uh, US, it's all the same, which is cool. I would just not recommend having this powered on for an extended amount of time without an adapter and you can pick up uh, you know, step down or step up adapters, whatever it is, uh, at like Radio Shacks, if you're really concerned about it. But overall, it's not really going to hurt the machine if you play it on uh, in North America. So just keep that in mind. Um, I would leave it powered on overnight, for example, okay? Um, but yeah, so um, I'm also kind of curious that there's three uh, USB uh, ports here. That's kind of odd, you know, not, not two. I don't, mean, I don't know many consoles that just play three-player, especially retro consoles, but I digress. Uh, so overall, I do recommend uh, this, uh, the Retro Freak. Do I think it's better than the Retron 5? Honestly, I would have to say I do. Um, and uh, definitely pick it on the websites like Amazon. You can get it on places like eBay. Uh, I'm sure you can just Google search these. Uh, they're not too hard to find. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate you guys thumbing up this video and liking this video, sharing this video, letting people know about it. Uh, that means a lot. We'll see you guys soon and take care. First off, guys, thank you so much for watching. Also, please subscribe. That means a lot. And if you want to stay in contact, you can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. I also have a website, GameStreet1.com, and I have t-shirts available to help support the show as well. And those are available at ChopChopGoods.com.